this episode, we take you with us on our planned 12-day offshore sailing passage from the Bahamas headed north. We begin by sailing off anchor and face calm conditions initially, though soon afterwards strong winds have us reefing down the mainsail. As we navigate the Gulf Stream, we spend time considering our route options and evaluate conflicting weather models. And as the days tick by, we begin to experience issues with a critical piece of equipment, our autopilot. We eventually have no choice but to heave to and tear it apart. But that's when things go from bad to worse. We are actually planning to sail off anchor today. So open ocean is out there. And that's where we're headed. He is going to pull on the anchor to get it in the right position and then we're gonna put up the mainsail and use that to pop the anchor out. squall line coming through tonight. Uh, we just have a full main no jib right now. Rolled in a jib to weather it. It's probably going so slow. Uh, a little bit north of Bahamas right now. It's still very tropical and squally out here. Good morning. It is the second day of our passage, I guess. We're 25 hours now. 25 hours. One hour first. It's that period where you're just kind of trying to adjust to the motion and we are looking at the weather. The Euro based, Euro weather model based, which is these two, the red and yellow, versus the American based, are kind of having a split either northwest or northeast. Looks like <laughs> half of them are telling us to go one way and half of them are telling us to kind of go the other way. So when's the next weather download? That's 2.4 hours. Mega cake. <laughs> I don't think I really estimated that well. Journaling? Yeah. Keeping a logbook for us? Yeah, keeping a log. Of everything relevant, like the book I'm reading right now for fish. There's your cod. I drew a cod in my journal last night. Bacalao, as they say in Portugal. Oh yeah, I forgot about that word. Oh, it's the morning of day three now. We've woken up to pretty, or I've woken up, sorry. 
used to the motion yesterday and I'm finding that I'm seasick again today. Time to shake out a reef. When we have a reef sail, we're decreasing the size of the surface area of the sail. And we do that when wind is stronger. Every boat has a different point at which they'll reef. For us, that's usually around 14 knots. We're about to remove a reef, but the process to add or remove a reef is the same. So what we would do first is we keep the jib powered up so the boat doesn't start rolling around as we reduce sail. Um, we would blow the main sheet so the boom goes all the way out and the sail starts to lock. I would then go up on deck, uh, ease the halyard, and either put the hook in for the reef or out, and then re-raise the main. And over here, these are the reef lines. They control the outside bit of the triangle here. Bring the main sheet back on. So we're having difficulties figuring out where we should go right now. As you can see, the models are pretty split as to which direction we should go. Gulf Stream is over here. You can see this south flowing wind versus the north going current, which will create chop. These three models, per the computer, would say it would be faster technically, but it would not be comfortable. Um, so I think we're going to pick an intermediate waypoint over here that's out of the Gulf Stream. Um, and we'll probably have to motor someone to get there through there. But yeah, I think that's what we're going to do to be safe. It's the morning of our fifth day, and after covering 500 miles since leaving the Bahamas, we are now situated about 100 miles off North Carolina's coast. I couldn't get the break that time. Okay. So I was a little reluctant to film this earlier because I thought it would be like bad juju to even say the words out loud, but um, having some issues with our autopilot again after we fixed it um, and the problem we're having now I think is different so I think we did fix what we thought we fixed last time so that's good um, so we don't have the same symptoms but um, it was our first calm night last night so it's nice conditions but unfortunately we were plagued with the autopilot giving us trouble all night now I think we're officially in diagnosis mode but we might have just solved the problem yeah. We'll see. No. So that wasn't it. That just gave up. Why? You have to check those electrical connections out. Bill has been listening while he engages and disengages the autopilot in an attempt to diagnose the issue, but to no avail. So now he's going to check the electrical connections. First, he checks the connections to the course computer located here. And then he checks the ones to the motor on this side. Unfortunately, what we thought might have worked didn't work. The problem that we think is the issue we can't fix on our own. So at least without some information. So unfortunately, um, we're gonna have to head into shore is the decision we've just made. We're over about 24 hours away um, and it's a little less efficient when you're hand steering. We are bummed. It's about half an hour later and I'm just hand steering, um, which is pretty challenging here because of the current seems to be going against the waves, making it pretty hard to actually keep on a straight line. So this is the line that I'm trying to follow on the chart plotter, and I'm just steering, so it's not actually very complicated what I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to follow that line. Um, but basically, every time I get to the line, uh, the current moves me in the opposite direction, and then once I correct and move the opposite way, the waves counter that motion. So. Basically, to keep a straight line, I have to steer pretty wide like this and then like that all the way. We got some intel from Onshore, one of our friends, and 
we have a lead again, so we're answering to go back to the coast while still trying to fix this thing. What's interesting is that the specific lead that we're following right now is that the motor might be dirty, basically. The uh, motor brushes. Um, oh, don't blow in there. But it's made of a bit of a mess, but I'm really proud of Bill. One of my favorite things about him is how persistent he is. So I know even if we don't get this fixed right now, um, the work that he's doing will definitely benefit us once we get to shore and we have to um, fix this. I'm just focused on my task. I'm trying not to think about the next 24 hours. I'm trying to support Bill as much as I can from, from the side of the helm. So it is about six or seven hours later now, and we're gonna heave to tonight and get some sleep. A lot of work into this today, so we're both pretty exhausted. Um, yeah, but thankful that the weather is good, so it could be definitely be worse. It could be a lot worse, so. Oh.